In today's video, we're going to be doing a late night special as we've done before. We're going to be taking a look at multiple upcoming potential snowstorms in the east. It is a very active pattern and as we will see a very cold pattern as well. So we're going to dive into that today. Now, before we get into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description, pinned comment and the top right corner of your screen. We do weather consulting for businesses and individuals alike. We do a lot of consulting calls, consulting emails, consulting texts, and we have an exclusive community for you guys for weather consulting. It's all for only $5 a month, and we're actually running a promotion right now for Black Friday. If you put in the code DIRECT at checkout, you will get your first month for only $1. Be sure to check it out today. Now, also, we do have our final winter forecast out and available in Prestige Weather for early access and our official December forecast. So be sure to check out those for only 99 cents if you use that promo code direct in checkout. Now, let's go ahead and dive into things. And as we're taking a look, we're just going to dive into tomorrow. Uh, because it's already so late today and we can see storm system number one here over the eastern states i have no idea why my pen is blue right now but sure enough it gets the job done but we can see that there is a storm in place the only problem here is if we track the jet stream here we can see that there's a pretty big ridge here in the east so we're taking a look here at some pretty warm conditions as this storm moves in we do have snowfall over the Rockies and the Cascades here. This is mostly in the form of moderate to heavy snowfalls. There is a couple of low pressure systems around 1001 up here near Montana, 1003 down here in Colorado. Uh, and really the storminess in the east, we're not seeing too much low pressure with it. It's mostly just a transitionary storm that's moving through as we're going to see cold air moving in with it eventually. Now, all of this energy kind of recycles by the time we're taking a look at Saturday on December 2nd. A low is going to begin to develop here in the deeper south. And we're going to see this all kind of move up to the north. Before we take a look at that, I want to take a look out west because we still have very heavy snowfall, especially there now in the Cascades. And then as we take a look further eastward towards Idaho and Montana, we're also seeing pretty heavy snowfall out there as well. Now let's go ahead and continue this on as we reach Sunday on December 3rd here. What we see is a 994 millibar low pressure center over Pennsylvania. Now this is a pretty similar storm to the previous one. We do actually have some pretty warm air around. But the difference here I would say is that there is cold air moving in simultaneously. So even though there's warm air in place that is going to be cooling down pretty rapidly. Simultaneously we are still dealing with pretty heavy snowfall throughout western Canada. And then the Rockies here as well. Let's keep this going. I want to take us through the overnight here on Monday the 4th. And take a look at this. We begin to see some pretty heavy snowfall develop here for New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. I want you guys to keep in mind that I think this is going to be pretty exclusive for the mountainous regions of, again, those states. New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. I don't think this is going to be a widespread low elevation or coastal snowfall event. I think Maine, we could see some snowfall around the coast because this low is going to be pretty close as a 983. And what we see is what's called cold air damming. And once this low moves through, we do see a lot of cold air moving in from the north behind that low pressure system. And that's enough to bring that rain snow line further and further south. I'm drawing a very large and probably unrealistic rain snow line. But just for you to imagine, that line where we see snowfall to the north and rainfall to the south continues to move southward as this storm moves further offshore. So we do get some coastal regions eventually seeing some snowfall as a result of that. That moves out and we actually see a second big cooldown diving southward here as we're reaching Wednesday the 6th into Thursday the 7th here. And what we see is there is some low pressure offshore. Nothing's really coming together yet. But look at how extreme this jet stream is. Massive ridge out west and for the central states. And then a deep digging trough here over the east that is extending well far south into the Carolinas and even Georgia there. With very, very cold air even below freezing temperatures in some cases. Thursday the 7th is a little bit quieter in the east. Although we do have a 999 millibar low pressure center there over the state of Washington. I think that's worth mentioning. By the time we reach Friday, we see things kind of progressing in a similar fashion. And what we're left with here is by Sunday the 10th, a very deep trough in the west here, and then a very large ridge in the east as well as the west coast. So we see this kind of warm along the east, 
warm along the west coast, which could be the beginning of what we call a positive PNA. And then this cold air is probably over, gonna t over time going to pretty much move eastward. We will see that take place. But this is the end of the model run, so this is all we have for you today. Let's take a look at this GFS model, and I want to take a look at the differences. So we're going to move past kind of what's upcoming in the near future. Uh, we do see that we get a bit of a coastal snowstorm here around the 6th here. It's going to be a 998. We see some snowfall perhaps for New York, for Massachusetts, and potentially for southern New England like Connecticut and Rhode Island, although I think that that is a little bit far-fetched at this point. Let's keep going. I want to take us to when we see our next snowstorm, and really this is going to happen once we see cold air diving in after the 10th, and look at this monster. I think that the point here isn't the specifics, so keep in mind that I don't think this is going to look like this by the time we're getting, getting here. I really, really don't. The important thing to note is that the pattern overall, according to both of these models, supports frequent cooldowns in the east, as we've seen, and frequent coastal storms, which do have the potential to come together like we're seeing here. But that doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to be accurate at 282 hours out, because that is absolutely pretty far-fetched, and I would take this with a grain of salt to say the least. But the pattern, the overall picture, is more important to me. But take a look. I mean, this is beautiful to look at. I mean, all snow lovers are probably loving this, but again, very, very far out and likely not going to be the case. But this would be a classic snowstorm if something like this was to come together. And the upcoming pattern does have the potential to support large coastal snowstorms as this cold air moves eastward. Time and time again, we're going to be watching for these potential snowstorms and big cooldowns on the way. Now, what I want to do is just dive straight into the temperature pattern. This is a late night special. We usually go a little bit shorter on these ones. We see some warm air persisting, but by the time we're reaching the 6th, we do see this big cool down in the east. So take a look at this. Below normal temperatures in the east, above normal temperatures in the west. We do see the cold air kind of persist all the way through close to the 10th, but the warm air makes a comeback. We see cold air entering into the west. And that's pretty much the opposite of what you want to see for cold and snow in the east. But by the time we reach the 11th, 12th, 13th, we already see the cold air return to the east. Warm air back there for the west. And as we keep going, we see that cold air persists all the way past the midpoint of the month on the 15th. So certainly a lot of cold air, a lot of potential snowfall on the way. And we're going to be walking through it day by day with you guys. We do upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe for daily weather videos just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.